questions right away because they're the ones oh, that we're going to see here. So we're going to start with you right there. You've been queued up for a while now. Thanks, you. My name is Lisa, and I love, love, love all these Mary Potter, but my question is for Isaac in oh. regard to the OA. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't spoil it for people in the room who haven't watched it. The script but. called for you to say, I'm blank blank. Yes, that's correct. Which is the first time that maybe more of your personal self has met with one of your more dubious characters. So I, my question is, how did you feel uh, about that? And please, please, please tell me that you guys are working very hard to find a home for season three, four, and five. Uh, well, so first of all, uh, I want to work out how much uh, I'm wasting everyone's time. Who, hands up if you've seen the OA. Uh, that's great. I apologize to everybody else for the next minute. Um, uh, but all I can say is blank, 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 blank. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen it, it's uh, one of the most interesting and beautiful stories I've ever been lucky to be a part of. After 30 something years of being in the storytelling business, it completely rekindled my love uh, and belief in the power of stories. It's incredible, both, both seasons. But it was a five season arc that they sold to Netflix. They have the whole labyrinth, the whole puzzle in their head. It's enormously popular all over the world, but Netflix have their own internal logic for whatever reason. They decided to stop doing it. Uh, I'm heartbroken because I might be his number one fan. I, I thought it was incredible and I can't wait to see. And I know what they're planning for season three, four, and five. And it's, it's equally good, if not more mind blowing than the first two. So uh, it's a bit tacky for us to be uh, involved in the, the fan campaign because it's not appropriate. I'm still working for Netflix in many other areas. I'm in the Dark Crystal and stuff. So, uh, uh, so, uh, join the campaign. They, they, uh, they took a billboard out in Times Square, they had a blimp, they were doing the movements uh, all over the place and outside Netflix headquarters. Uh, I don't know whether they'll ever be anymore, but I'm just so blessed and grateful that we got to make those two seasons because they stand head and shoulders above almost everything I've ever done. So, thanks for asking. Netflix seem to be open to letting the last but you know, they never answer my calls. I don't know. I don't speak to them. I'm, not in, I, I, I'm lucky if I get to speak to my wife and kids. I certainly don't phone them at Netflix. When you look at Firefly, right? Fan campaigns work. They absolutely do. Go ahead. Next question. So, Fanboys is one of my all-time favorite comedies. So, my question for Dan is, uh, if the boys got together to go after The Force Awakens, would they actually want to watch it, or the, would they want to destroy it? Oh, and um, what's she talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so I did this movie that was like an homage to, to Star Wars and all things that we grew up watching during the 80s and 90s. <laughs> yeah, called uh, Fanboys. And, um, and it's basically an homage to all of you, uh, which, is, which is lovely. Um, we're, we're trying to cultivate something, uh, a sequel, um, a TV show, something. The, re the rights are, I, I believe, available, and we would be crazy not to do it, not to jump on the Star Wars bandwagon. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that the, my plan would be like, they watch the first movies, <laughs> you know, they, they wait the first one ends, fanboys ends, and they're like, about to watch The Phantom Men Menace, what if and we're just like, what if it sucks? Because <laughs> 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 they don't know it yet, you know, they're just, it all, it's all leading to this. And uh, so I think that post that, it's like the, the group is divided, some of them love it, some of them hate it, and, and then this, would, the, this version would be about getting the band back together and going to see these movies and rekindling it. And, yeah. Hey, you want like a special edition, uh, this is like a fanboys, this is Hutch on it. It's a fanboys trading card. Your face! Come and get it. Do you hear the card? Did you hear the trading card? You guys should think about it. If you look up your speak, I've given you all a new uh, Lexus. I can't outdo you. Hogwarts house does it match your character and just yeah 
and do you think and why or why not it matches with who you portray in Harry Potter? And uh, Fantastic Beasts too, I want to hear <laughs> also. Do you, do you guys have a house? Did you get sorted into a house? Uh, yeah, I did, I got sorted. Where are you going? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I got, um, I got Hufflepuff. <laughs> Call me a filthy bundle right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really see the point of Hufflepuff or other. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm a Hufflepuff, I agree with you. <laughs> there's, there's the goody two shoes in Gryffindor, the incredibly boring ones when the lights go off at nine o'clock. <laughs> they, they all stay their friends and go to church, and then there's all the cool kids in Slytherin. <laughs> Because we know the devil has the best tunes. Oh, there's three members there. There's the kids in red we bully, and then there's the other two completely irrelevant houses. Is that the way I should say? Uh, you lost that? Okay, so. all right. But we do have to win the Rock Johnson in Hufflepuff. <laughs> this will be the point where I insult Dwayne the Rock Johnson. That's not happening, I'm sure. <laughs> 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 he was irrelevant. Why not? <laughs> what made you guys interested in becoming actors? That's, I, well, it's a, serious, it's a serious question. There, there are funny answers, but the truth is that I was always uncomfortable in company and in my own skin, and I, I, I could fake it with other people, even through my teens, through life, uh, and even now often. And I just was always curious. I wasn't aware of it, but I was curious what made other people seem so confident or, or so themselves and I adapted to every group I was in to try and feel like I would fit in changing my voice or changing my character, anything and um, I went through life and it looked fine to other people from the outside I didn't feel that good on the inside and the first time I went into a rehearsal room when I was a student uh, I thought oh this is a place where I belong I'm not embarrassed to be me because this is a place where we pull apart we dissect what it is to be jealous or uncomfortable or angry or, or you know lonely and um and that curiosity still burns in me i'm still uh, uh, all of us i think i don't I'll speak for them but but it, it, what made me like acting was not this stuff and stuff i'm more comfortable with now it's that relentless drive to understand what makes everyone who they are and what's going on behind the eyes Yeah, I mean, that was a, that was a pretty uh, amazing answer. Uh, Jason will probably tell you, if, if he even remembers, I wasn't um, a very outgoing child at all. I, I very rarely spoke, um, uh, especially not to you guys on, on the set. I was very shy um, and introverted. Um, and uh, it was only when I was on set, when I was playing a character, that I suddenly felt free. Um, because it was no longer me, it wasn't the crippling um, sort of uh, shyness that Matthew Lewis had. I was somebody else and I was free to, to express. Um, and um, being able to utilize that has, has, has allowed me to grow personally. Um, and uh, so that was the reason why I started acting, was because I, I suddenly felt that I could be the real person. Um, and then as Jason very succinctly put it, I, um, the psychology behind it has been um, what has driven me further uh, to, to develop new characters, to investigate the reason why uh, we are who we are, why we behave the way we behave. It's, it's, it's really fascinating. And then to tell stories, um, you know, to, to, whether it's to inspire, whether it's to um, entertain, just whatever. Just I love telling stories and, and playing characters that are part of that. And that's what's kept me going with it. For you, it's just the money, right? It's just the money. Yeah. yeah I'm gonna, uh, my, my answer is, is going to be so hysterical because I'm over here in the bundle chair. <laughs> <laughs> so my answer is, I was like a toddler watching Looney Tunes. <laughs> <laughs> and I just started like doing the voices and making my brother laugh and acting like Daffy Duck and... Pickable, like pick up any. I was like, and then I was like, holy crap! One one guy does those voices. Mel Blanc. 
So that's, that set me off. I was like, oh my God, I want to see how many voices I can do. And between Mel Blanc and Chuck Jones, who like directed all that stuff, that guy was like a genius. I, I had my Marx Brothers education early on, and then I was off to the races. <laughs> no, but wait, hold on. <laughs> but why did you like doing those things? Well, why did you like the feedback he gave you? Exa exactly the same reason that you guys are talking about, where you have, it's, it's, at first as a toddler, it was just like, oh, oh, attention, oh, they're, they're laughing their asses off, at, 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 and, and I just took to it like a duck to water. And I was just like, wow, man, this is really, this, I just found, found it early on. And then as, I was like, wow, this is the only thing I know how to do. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and then going to college and then learning about the hero's journey and Joseph Campbell and all that, and just being like, damn, what I do is special. <laughs> right? Knowing that 
Fantastic Beast is a, is a spoke in the wheel of this thing. <laughs> Enormous! <laughs> Global, talk about the hero's journey. What she has done here is, is taken the hero's journey and made it the kid next door. And that's, I don't know, who, who has done that? Not a lot of people. Um, so it's very special what we're a part of. I thank my lucky stars every day and I actually wish I'm a star for this part. Um, so there's real magic and make sure that you keep wishing on stars and stuff like that. <laughs> it's your birthday! Oh, she's your face, so shut up. Can anybody in this? What's your name? Hello? Hey, what's your name? Annika. Oh, here we go. Don't make us sing out loud by ourselves. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Annika. Happy birthday to you. Multiplied by that. <laughs> I know, it's probably Sorry. the birthday. They I would. Not expecting to. <laughs> you have that up to the screen. Uh, oh, it's not her birthday. Okay. Bring it, bring it. Sorry, I'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> did you. When you were filming Harry Potter, did you ever think it would become this big? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's it, you got the birthday, you got the yet, get out of here! <laughs> sure. no, it was, oh, you know what? By the time we were filming the third, the fourth, the fifth, we knew, we knew what it was a lot. I, I said, this is true only of it. It doesn't feel any different, it's the same as filming anything else. You're just filming and telling stories. But I've been in hundreds of films, most of which no one has ever or will ever see, and, uh, and I've loved them. As some people have seen lots of them, but thank you. But, but, um, the undercurrent of every film or every television program, every creative enterprise you've ever been is, is a little kind of uh, riptide of fear. Is anyone going to watch this? Is anyone going to like it? It's fine, you still love doing it, but no one ever knows what's going to happen. And there was this thing that happened that you didn't even appreciate it while we're doing Harry Potter, necessarily. You appreciate it by contrast, that we all knew that everybody was waiting to see it and would love it. And, and because of that, the studio and the producers and the directors, everyone went, let's make these perfect. Let's take the time and spend the money, it wasn't our money, you know, but let's make these as great as we possibly can because they already have people who love them. And so we knew that they were loved. Didn't they have, you know, it never felt like any of them was going to be a flop or anything. Each film had got better and better and better. Um, I, I was, I'm a bit of a cynic. Um, I say a bit, I'm, I'm a perpetual cynic. And I was convinced that it, the house of cars was going to come down at some point. I don't know why. Uh, I, I thought that after the first two we wouldn't, do anymore, um, and then three and four maybe, and we won't do anymore. Um, I think it wasn't until film six that I thought, oh, yeah, we might finish this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I just, I just, it was too good to be true, I guess. Um, and so, eternally grateful that um, we managed to complete the whole set. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, there was definitely a sense around it that um, every year you guys didn't seem to be getting bored of it. Um, you just kept coming back, and, and so we said. I think, we, I think we have something here. Um, and um, yeah, but I never thought that here in 2019 I'd be sitting in a room in Portland, Oregon talking to hundreds of people about it. No way, not in a million years. Hey, uh, hold on, wait, it's your birthday, right? Your birthday? Here you go. Oh, no, it's your 40X ticket, okay? Go take it to, to, to take a Guardian or whatever you're... <laughs> I, have a, I have a podcast, okay? They're, 40X is my sponsor, and I want you guys to come on my podcast at some point. So this is my way of segueing into that. Well done. What other shit have you got down there? What other I have cookies. <laughs> Special cookies for me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Um, what was it like playing your characters? Oh, you had a lot of fun doing yours, didn't you? <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I like my job, which is an awful, embarrassing thing sometimes to say. I like playing all characters. The thing is that, you know, we're, we're talking about films all these years on, but not because of the films. We're talking about it because Joe Rowling is a genius writer. It's the books and the stories she created. And, and as actors, oh, she'd be absolutely thrilled with that lukewarm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she'd be beside herself. She's um, right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, the thing is, as actors, we have a better time and we look better the more interesting and human and uh, believable the characters are. And so I've played characters that are, you know, it's a challenge to make them seem believable. But Lucius Malfoy is a really simply, he's a, you know, dyed in the wall vanilla racist. And that's what it is, you know. You can call them muggles or you can call them black people or Jews or whatever, but he's a, he's a monstrous racist. And he's trying to make Hogwarts great again, you know. So. <laughs> but so the, the fact is that I, there are people like that around, oddly enough. <laughs> None spring to mind, but. Um, <laughs> But I believed him, and I believed him because he's a bully, because he's a coward, uh, and he's loveless to his son because he comes from a long chain of abusive parents, and that's what he thinks parenting is. And he's desperate for his own advancement, and all those things are just a 12-course banquet for an actor. So what was it like? It was fantastic, the actual playing of it, and also being around this world, of which, which I've never seen before or since anything that has created so magnificently. It was, uh, it was blissful, it was paradise. Uh, I have to say one thing about, about Jason and, and uh, by extension, um, Tom. Two of the loveliest, if not the loveliest men that we had on... I'll on, go with these, I'll go with these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of, you know, so friendly, so charming, and so unlike the characters that they were playing. And the experience that I've had since Harry Potter in playing the bad guys, if you will, um, when it's things that are so polar opposite to how you would behave in real life, it is tremendous fun. And I cannot emphasize enough how polar opposite Jason and Tom are to their characters. That you could see how much fun they were Me having. Me more than Tom, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> I think Tom is the purest one of us all. I think right. um, so yeah, I can totally see how, how much fun they had doing that. And, and yeah, I, I, I adored um, playing Neville. You see, Neville was actually very like me. Um, I, I, when I got the role when I was 10 years old, I don't think it was my acting talent that really... <laughs> uh, it was because I was... I was Neville. I was shy. And Not the teeth. No, no, no. That was, I had the false teeth no, and false the teeth. fat suit that I had to wear and all this kind of stuff. Um, but I was. I was I was this bumbling, shy uh, kid. And, um, and so I loved taking his journey, his, his evolution, his, um, his progress to being this, this hero, which is, you know, I never became a hero personally, but we, Neville and I did, we grew up together and we took a very similar trajectory, um, me and my own life and Neville on screen. So I, I adored it, I loved playing him for all 10 years. <laughs> I, uh, okay, so the quick answer is that I, I love playing Jacob, it's like he's in my blood and like, I feel like I'm playing an ancestor or something. <laughs> the fact that these two gentlemen are up here to illustrate certain aspects of it. So like I said, I'm, I'm jumping onto a wheel. We're a spoke that's part of a wheel that's turning. Okay, so I, you can't help but reference what these guys and everybody else from the ensemble, you know, the foundation that they laid out before us. So when you think about the racism, that's at the center of my <laughs> whole thing with Queenie. And the, I mean, that's the part, that's the reason we can't be together. I mean, and when I watch those movies, um, it's, it's Malfoy, man, that um, scares me the most. Uh, <laughs> uh, because he's, you know, Vol oh, Voldemort. <laughs> is, uh, I mean, he is. 
He's evil, he, you know, but he, it's like he can't help it. <laughs> There's a human aspect to Malfoy, which is really scary. You, you know people like that, as he is. <laughs> and, uh, and then the whole relationship with Dobby, oh my God, probably the CGI Dobby, who is probably the most heart-wrenching character <laughs> in the entire series. Okay, so that, let it just go down the record that Dobby got a bigger round of applause than we <laughs> But there's a the whole thrill now. Yeah, so, okay, so, so think about that. Like, that's a CGI character. So, you, so that's setting that up going into this process. Um, saying, okay, this is the world we're, we're, we're living in where the CGI characters are as real as the, you know, the, the live action and um, the themes are hardcore <laughs> and um, we had some really big shoes to fill, obviously. Um, and I'm trying to pull a long bottom right now. <laughs> if you think about Jacob, okay? It's like he's, you know, he's, he's a little out of shape, you know, at the beginning when you first see him. And I'm taking a hint from your character saying these guys are supposed to transform over the course of, the, of these movies, you know? So I'm taking a step of my own health and I'm saying, I'm making certain decisions because I feel like I own the character. I feel like I am this character. And um, so I hope that when people watch these next couple movies, they, they re reference this and say, oh yeah, you see what it was to him? And man, a lot about his performance is affecting Jacob's performance. So, that's the end of that character. That's, 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 that's the end of that, that comment. <laughs> so, uh, now what have you got for him? I have nothing. Uh, sorry. I have nothing else. <laughs> Did that even answer your question? Do you have a car? <laughs> what about your house keys? You see all these monitors here? They're yours. <laughs> my very first fandom, so it's always hold, holds dear to my heart. If you could change- You've moved on, obviously. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> if you could change anything about your character, what would you change? <laughs> what did you start? We keep coming to you at the end, Dad. Go on. What would I change? <laughs> that mustache. <laughs> I know everyone loves the mustache. But that does not work off set, man. <laughs> I cannot wear that anywhere else in any other time period. <laughs> I had an outfit in number five that was like getting a gastric band put on. It was a kind of... It was a black leather ninja thing. <laughs> and, uh, and it didn't quite cast the shape that Jenny, the costume designer, wanted. She kept on trying to make the waist thinner and the shoulders bigger. And my waist was the size my waist was. The shoulders got bigger and bigger. In the end, I felt like I had, uh, I had a vacuum cleaner on my ass for the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I would change. I thought it was very fetching. <laughs> with you. Um, I, you know, some interesting costumes over the years. Um, interesting haircuts. I certainly would have changed his hair in, in film five. Uh, the old mushroom head. Was, I mean, again, because going back to what Dan just said, you guys see it for a two-hour film. I had that haircut for an entire year. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm 16 years old. I'm at school with that haircut. Very difficult. <laughs> and I've had the mustache as well since then. I've had to do that for eight months, and it's grim. <laughs> I actually genuinely, when I had that mustache, also got cast as a sex offender in something else. 
<laughs> We're in Portland. We're in the religious capital of facial hair. <laughs> 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 Like, I'm such a huge, like, Harry Potter fan, Hansel Beast fan, like, I grew up to Harry Potter, and I'm just, like, so... Just Thanks for so making you feel old. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> really close to my heart. Um, but my question is, um, since, like, Fantastic Beasts have come out, like, which era would you live in? Would you live in Grindelwald's era or um, Voldemort's era? <laughs> Did you ever watch The West Wing? No. You watch the West Wing? No. You watch it? I live in Jet Bartlett's era. That's what I mean. I mean, I'm right there with you. Absolutely. Go on. <laughs> well, shit. I think I, you know, just because the grass is greener, I'd want to live in their era. Yeah. Era. Or. <laughs> and where would you live? Oh shit. Oh her. I was it 1910s, 1920s? 1920s. 1920s? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no iPhones. <laughs> You can do both with this time turner. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets a time turner. <laughs> Come on up. I don't know how to follow up that question. Um, I just really wanted to quickly say thank you to Matt and to Dan. You guys represented. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting to you. I'm getting to you. I'm getting to you. Hold on. I have a special thing. <laughs> Sorry, okay. These two represent anyone for me that has like ever felt anxious and needs to overcome that anxiety and overcome that nervousness and just be a badass for a little bit and that's awesome and I just thank you so much for doing that. Jason, I Sorry to like make you feel like old again, but I <laughs> I grew up with you being Hook for Peter Pan. And it does sound morbid, but it made me love the character even more because of all the depth that you brought to it. And I was just wondering if you could tell any stories with working with Jeremy or with Tom, either one. I love both, so. I was just wondering if you story. Um, so, thank you very much for mentioning that. It's, it's, I think the best films I've ever been in. I think it's an amazing film to be the And the reason is, uh, and it's an odd one for people who haven't seen it, it's a very faithful adaptation of Jane Barry's book. Mm -hmm. There's been a strange obsession over the years with the Pan character. But the story of Peter Pan, which was originally called Peter and Wendy, is about a young girl who's 12, shares a bedroom with her brothers, plays being pirates and is told, that's it, your childhood's over, it's time to be a woman. And in those days, that meant having a family, having children, you know, having a husband, running a household, and she's terrified, because she's a little girl. And she's so scared that that night, she dreams of a world in which she's got a friend she invents who's got his baby teeth. He'll never want to grow up. But she is, and you couldn't get away with writing that today, but it's a real Freudian story. I've got two teenage girls, and, and the world is a, a very difficult place to be uh, a young woman, uh, and particularly if you're, you know, part of you still sleeps with the teddy bears, and still part of you is looked at and treated like a woman, and it's an incredibly sophisticated story. It's why it's still around after 100 years. So I, I, I'm a bottomless pit of need for flattery. I'm an actor, but nonetheless, <laughs> that Captain Hook that I play is the only time anyone's ever played anything approximating Jay and Barry's Captain Hook. It's a magnificent story. If you haven't seen the film, I don't want to be a star that, but watch the film or read the book. It's a really, it's a great, great story. But as for working with Tom and Jeremy, I, I am a big child at heart. I, I was a children's entertainer when I was at drama school. I was a camp counselor for a long time. When, from the age of 12, I was entertaining at my friends' parties, doing magic and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I, I love kids. If I go out to friends' houses, I'm invariably found playing with their kids instead of grown-ups. So I loved 
being with Tom. I love being with Jeremy. Tom, more because of many, many years, we're still friendly. He just texted me today um, from Sweden. Uh, he's a, he, as Matt said, he's one of the loveliest people you'll ever meet in your life. And um, it, I was just blessed that our friendship continued all these years. He's a, he was a special kid then, and he's a special man now. I'm so glad to see you. Thank you. Just sit down, you're looking very, very flushed. What are your guys' favorite scenes to do in Harry Potter? <laughs> what is that? How is nodding an answer for that? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I like the scene where I had the long hair and I turned and I said, Potter. Sometimes I, I've done some very traumatic stories. 
a film coming out that came out here this year, but it's coming out just now in England called Hotel Mumbai about a siege in the Taj Hotel in, in 2008. And uh, some of the most rewarding experiences as an actor are when you do some of the most traumatic and difficult stories and you get to meet the real life people who survived them or behaved remarkably. So, uh, you know, I did a film called Black Hawk Down as well. I met all the rangers from who, who had fought in Somalia. And uh, thanks for that one person for that. I'll throw you a pitch if you do that again. Um, so, the most rewarding things are often the times when, not what you see on the screen, but for me anyway, it's the research period of the, you know, I did a Holocaust film. I spent a lot of time talking to people and steeping myself in diaries for the time and um, meeting people who had survived. So, uh, a lot of the times, for me anyway, the most rewarding things are all the stuff that you don't see, all the people who open their lives to us as actors and give you access to their thoughts and feelings, stuff they've never shared even with family members. Uh, and so, uh, it's all, all that stuff that you, that you, in the end, don't bear the fruits of, but we carry. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of exactly where I was going to go. I, I did a, a TV show for the BBC called uh, Bluestone 4-2, which I'm... Wow! <laughs> okay. I think more people did let a dolphin in, I think. I think more people in this room saw it than in the UK, so that's, that's nice. Uh, and it was, um, we were a bomb disposal detachment in Afghanistan, but it was a comedy. And we made it um, sort of in a similar vein to MASH, and, and, and we'd made it with a ton of uh, advisors, and we had a lot of squaddies and, and ex officers on set the whole time. and. We really strive to make it, with obviously a little bit of artistic license, we strive to make it as, as realistic and believable as possible. And we used a lot of stories and anecdotes that the squaddies and soldiers would have got up to themselves um, when they were out on deployment. And after um, the first series that I was in came out, we got to go to one of the uh, one of the hospitals um, where all the wounded soldiers uh, were coming back from Afghanistan. And you know, some of them were physical, some of them were mental um, scars. And we just sat and spent Christmas with these guys, and they watched the show, and they said it was, you know, I'm going into Tom Hiddleston territory here, I'm trying not to be pretentious, but um, we, um, we, um, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, a few of them said that they, they watched the show, and it reminded them of, 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 of all the great stuff that they had, all the friends that they'd had um, out when they were serving, and, um, and how much fun they actually had, and, and didn't focus on, all the negative um, sides of stuff, the stuff they have to deal with every day. They didn't want to think about that. And, and, and to go there and think that a job that you did that was just the most amazing fun for us actually made a difference for someone, that is, that is just mind-blowing. I still can't quite grasp that my, my job allows me to have that impact. So that is what's the most rewarding for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, all very rewarding. But here's the thing. I, we're, we're, oh, oh, I always find like the newest project you're working on is, is like always the most like really rewarding. I, I feel like I, I would I want to do Jacob for the rest of my life. I hope they do like like a hundred of those movies. Like, you know, I hope they just do it forever. But we're working on a movie called Spinning Gold right now, and um, who knows? Yes, he and I. He and I. Montreal. I don't know if we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens with we're, we're in the middle of this movie, but. Um, I feel like there's being in this business is such a small world, and and I can be doing a, like Samuel Jackson is also in the midst. He's got, got a great cast, and um, that's what I find is so rewarding. Like, this right here is rewarding. Like we get to to be. A, I, I, I'm such a, I'm like fanboying right fanboy right now, just being like knowing that oh wow, I'm doing a movie with Bowboy, man. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Like, and, and to say that I'm, a, to even say that I'm associated with, you know, the whole Harry Potter universe is just like, I'm, I'm in a surreal dream. Like, it, every day is rewarding. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> 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 yeah, right, I just want to say, I'm sure I say it on behalf of uh, Dan and Matt as well. When we come to conventions and people come up to the table, they, they very often start by going. <gasps> There's this person I've seen on the giant screen, or it's been important to me. One of the most rewarding things that's ever happened to me, not the selfish fun of, of, of researching and acting, is that people come up all the time about Harry Potter or about other things we've been in, and they say how impactful, how it's helped people in dark times, or it's helped people through difficult times or difficult relationships. And given that acting is a pretty self-centered thing to do, it's amazing that we're part of this story that has 
have been of any use to anybody ever. And, uh, and it, we're blessed that we get to hear those stories when you come up and tell us. Never stop telling us those stories, because that's, that's why we're here. Gentlemen, can we take a second of the crowd in the back?